My name is Aman and in this video we're going to be talking about image generation using GANs. Now before we jump into the actual code, I'm going to talk a little bit about the theory behind GANs. A GAN is a generational adversarial network. Let me write that down. And these are basically networks that are used to create realistic objects. Or by realistic we mean something that imitates a human. Now the name gives you some clues. Like the network part tells you that's a network. Generation tells you I generate something. The adversarial part, now this is the key part. That tells you a little bit about the structure of the network. <coughs> it tells you that it has two systems that kind of compete against each other. Now what are these two systems? We have a generator and a discriminator. So the generator, and both of these are standalone neural networks on their own, like they both work as a proper fully fledged neural network. Your generator takes a random seed as an input and tries to generate the object that you're creating, which in our case would be an image, as the output. <coughs> so we can say that this thing generates images, in our case. The discriminator tries to distinguish between real and fake images. Now, what are these real and fake images? The fake images are the ones created by the generator above, while the real images are the images that you actually want to try and imitate. So in our case, let's say we're trying to create a painting by Picasso, and we're trying to recreate something that looks kind of like a Picasso painting. So the real image would be an actual Picasso painting, while the fake image would be something that the generator created on its own. Now the network trains by pitting these two networks against each other, with the generator trying its best to create something that can't be distinguished by the discriminator, and the discriminator learning how to discriminate better. Then you cut the training when the discriminator can't really tell a, any appreciable difference between an image created by the generator or an actual image and at that point you take the generator from the model and input a random seed into it so that you can get out your so that you can get your actual image now we'll move on to some actual code so this is the actual code that I have here this is a Python notebook in which I've implemented again that recreates abstract images and abstract paintings and I will go through the code for it so the first block is basically like this dictates your TensorFlow version, some basic imports, a pip install in case you don't have this in your system already. So those are some basic imports. You can just copy it from here. That's not really important. Now I'm using drive to store my actual data fit, which I'm training on. So you can use this syntax, which is from drive.mount content slash G drive. And then instead of this address that I have over here, you would put in the address to where you have your data set. And then I've called that image path. <coughs> now PIL is an image processing module and I'm going to use that to do a little bit of image processing. Over here what I'm doing is uh, I'm amplifying the data set because the number of images in the data set are actually not that many because there aren't that many actual abstract paintings by these artists which we can find. So to s make it seem like the, m the model is training on more images than it actually is, we use this amplification algorithm and just increase the number of images by replicating it. And lastly, over here, we're doing, we're normalizing the image and then uh, making it an NPRA and appending it to our data set. Now over here, you can see we've set the batch size and buffer size and we're creating a trained data set. Now what this basically does is it turns the 
data type from a numpy array into a tensorflow array into a tensorflow tensor and that makes it uh, such that uh, tensorflow can use this data easily now it also shuffles the data which makes it a little more convenient and easier to train now this is your generator and this is the first neural network that we're going to be creating now here you can see that it's a sequential keras layer and you add the first dense layer set biases to false and all of them which is a choice preference it makes training time quicker in this case and so it's preferable but of course you can try the other way and you shouldn't really notice a huge difference but of course experiment with these things on your own and then we've put the input shape to 100 comma nothing and that's just shows that that's null mm, shows that we are using an initial randomized string which is a hundred characters long you have the batch normalization to prevent numbers from blowing up and you add a leaky relu that's your activation layer here you can learn about what the leaky relu exactly is by checking other resources i don't think that's in the scope of this video and then again you can see you reshape the layer and then after that you basically put a bunch of con 2d convolutions such that you transform it into a 32 32 and 2024 into a 512 512 by 3 where this is the actual shape of the image that you're trying to create which is a 512 by 512 pixel image with rgb channels which are your three colors which is what's indicated by three here now this function just creates this model and returns you this uh, generator model and then we're going to call on this function and we're going to call this model gen which is our generator similarly for discriminator you do a similar thing except that it would be the kind of the reverse of the generator because you're taking the final image as the input and you're trying to output one number between zero and one with zero showing that it's an entirely fake image and one showing that it's an entirely real image and the discriminator basically gives you a value between those two and you do a similar thing over here you add a bunch of layers it has the same things a dropout is a new thing over here <coughs> that's not really important it just makes it easier it just makes the model train quicker it's not extremely important to the architecture of it and then you call discrim our discriminator and that's that then we define a losses so cross entropy over here is the binary cross entropy uh, which we are using from like the tensorflow library uh, discriminator loss is a function we're defining which adds the real loss and the fake loss which is the cross entropy between uh, an array of entirely ones and a real output and the fake loss is the cross entropy between an array of entirely zeros and the fake output and our total loss would then be the sum of these two losses and the generator loss which is only of a fake outputs because that's the only thing the generator has the gen anything the generator makes is fake by definition so you would just return the cross entropy between uh, an array of entirely ones and the fake output the optimizer we're using is adam which is a very standard optimizer and it's the same for both of them you can again experiment with this even change around the value with which it converges and you can see if that makes a difference this is the place where we are saving the checkpoints again this is up to you you can save it anywhere you want now here we are defining the epochs in the training loop and the noise dimension which is 100 if you remember this was the randomized seed we are taking to create images using the generator and number examples generate is basically the number of noise samples you are taking and the seed will then create these noise samples so that's 4 into 100 basically gives you 4 seeds of 100 now this is the training step here first we take the noise and we create noise equal to the batch size and then with gradient tape is basically kind of like a scroll that keeps track of all the different gradients for the back propagation of your two different networks over here like if you're using more than one network which you want to back propagate together then you have you end up using something like gradient tape since the gen tape is the thing for the generator disk tape is the one for the discriminator 
and now over here you can see the generated image is equal to like the generator which was this network over here so this network over here is taking an input of the noise and training is true because you want this thing to train and your real output would be the discriminator in the images and the training equal to and this again you would want the training to be equal to true and fake output would be the discriminator the generated images which was the images created by the generator and again training is equal to true because of course you want to train the discriminator as well now the generator loss is the generator loss the fake output which was the output after the discriminator dis operated on the image by the generator as you can see over here and the same thing for the discriminator and the gradients of the generator is where you're using the gradient tape and the gradients of the discriminator again the same thing and then you apply the gradients which basically is the back propagation that you've learnt of in normal neural networks now you the important thing over here to note is that you train both of these networks together so that they both become stronger and stronger for with each step which kind of is a hard thing to balance out because a lot of times you might notice that sometimes the generator just ends up becoming much stronger than discriminator and you can't really do anything in the GAN then when that is what makes GANs hard to train to be honest it's the fact that one of the parts of the network might learn at a rate faster than the other so that's what you really play around with the numbers to try and fix and that's about that that's a side note about how you train GANs then we're going to define a way to generate and save the images which is if you have a model number of epochs in the test input then your predictions are basically the model test input training is false over here because you do not want to be training when you're actually just creating a prediction you want a static model and the figure is you basically plot the figure figure size is arbitrary here you can honestly choose whatever you want just choose something and over here remember that we normalize the images in the beginning so over here you're going to denormalize it so that the images actually look like how they would we normalize it because neural networks find it easier to work with numbers between minus one and one rather than working with bigger numbers they just end up training quicker that's about it there's no other reason to be doing that and then of course you can save the figure over here as you can see it's all like basic python stuff and here we're going to define the define the training function so basically you have the data set and the number of epochs and for epoch and range epoch start is time dot time this literally just tells you your system time at the moment for image batch in data set that takes each batch in your data set because if you remember a uh, data set earlier the when we did the tensorflow slices it also has a batch size in it so it basically turns the data set into batches of the certain size and you're taking each one of those batches you can take turn the batch size to one if you're not comfortable with working with batches that are larger but normally somewhere between 8 to 64 is where it's ideal for most neural networks so yeah that's what you have over here and then you will display a image this is just for our convenience you don't really need to do this it's not important to the architecture but it makes it you so that you can see what your network is generating and then this saves model to the checkpoint directory that you have decided earlier this is just another quality of life part of code it just tells you the how long each epoch is taken which epoch you're on and then this again just clears the outputs for the next time you want to generate an image and generate and save image and then after that we just call the train function of course and Oh, the train step over here, in case you don't remember, is uh, the function we defined over here, which was the thing with wrap propagates. So just keep that in mind. And you pretty much just do that. And these are some outputs that I've gotten, which are supposed to be abstract pieces of art. And if you let it train for longer and work with you know, change your numbers around, of course, you can get different results. And even like this is just one of the epochs of which i'm only showing some of them because the results between the abstract art things actually vary a lot so this is just a sample but this gives you code that works and 
helps with this and then after this all you really need to do is play around with it and experiment and see how you can get these things to work better and of course you don't need to use abstract art or anything like the default data set you'd work on this with is MNIST and the hand drawn numbers and you try to create a com an algorithm that can create numbers that look like a human have written it basically the digits from 0 to 9 so you can use that data set or you can use any data set you want honestly just play around with it and have some fun and that's about it for this tutorial thank you